In uh, this video, I'm going to show you how you can actually make a Looney Tunes-esque background using some of the lasso tools and other digital techniques that we've talked about before. We'll also talk about using the shape tool uh, as a way of making things like this street sign. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start off with our cliff. So I'm going to turn on my keyboard caster. It's all set up here. So I'll be broadcasting my keyboard strokes and I'll be calling them out so that way you can keep up as well. So I'm going to start off here with a cliff side and I'm going to move in with kind of a dark red. And I'm going to move this, you know, left of center. And we're just starting out with shape. strategy is to put every shape on its own layer. So I've got something like this. So what I've done is I've used a combination of the lasso tool along with Command J, which duplicates a selection, and Command U, which is to change the hue and saturation. And that's how I've got this part down. If, um, if you're not familiar with this, look at my earlier videos. I go over this technique quite a bit. So what we've got here is the shape. We're going to now add some texture for this particular cliff. I'm going to hold down the shift key using the regular lasso tool. And I'm going to create some both horizontal and vertical striations that tend to um, give this a rocky surface. J, Command U, and let's go in and holding down the Shift key again. This time I'm making very quick circular selections with the lasso tool, Command J, Command U, to give some sense of dirt. You can look and see that there's a little bit more of a rocky surface that we're trying to create there. Uh, I'll do the same thing over here. Uh, I'll go back to the shape that's dark. That's our front of our cliff. I'm uh, just making some horizontal markings. I might have some vertical ones here too. Just, just kind of give it some texture. Command J, Command U. And right there we have this clip. So we have two different values here. So we have uh, a face that is not receiving light and then another face that is receiving light. And we're te technically we've established a, right sor a light source to come from the right hand side. So I've got the cliff. Let's go ahead and group the cliff layer together. We'll hit Command G. We'll call this cliff. And let's now make a new layer underneath. This way we can kind of stay organized. And now I'm going to use the the lasso tool again, but this time I'm going to make a series of mountains. And because these are off in the distance, I'm going to use a cooler value. I'm going to go in with some maybe a desaturated blue. And I'll fill in a color there. And I want to create those uh, you know, ridges that are at the top of the mountain that kind of makes it look like it has some implied form. And again, with the lasso tool and with my shift key, I can readily do that. So I'm just making some vertical lines here and kind of making them f into the shape of the side of this uh, mountain. And I'll hit Command J, Command U, and I'm going to make these a little bit lighter. And the reason for that is because I want these light values to be further back in the distance. Let's check the contrast to see how we're doing in terms of our value. If I hit Command Y, and in my previous video, I talk about how you can set that up within Photoshop. It's a really quick way to check your grayscale values to see that you have sufficient contrast. Here, it looks like we have some pretty good contrast because there's definitely a difference between the background mountain as well as the side of the cliff or rock that we have 
um, we can distinguish those elements. They're not bleeding into one another. And sometimes when you're working in color, it's very difficult to be able to know that there's a contrast issue. Over time, you will um, get better with that. So I've got the mountain here. I'll hit Command-G, call that mountain. And then above the mountain layer, I'm making a new layer. And this is where I'm going to put down another rock. And in one of those rare instances, I'm going to sample for my own painting. And that will now kind of imply some shadows for this rock. Command J, Command U. And let's extend that a little bit further by having some areas that are not receiving much light at all. So Command J, Command U. Let's add some textured elements here. We'll put some marks. Command J, Command U. And for the front of the rock, we might see some ridges. So we'll go to that base layer, Command J, Command U. And you can see that the rock has some kind of surface. And I'll just kind of extend that over here. Command J, Command U. So we have our rock. Let's go ahead and group all the layers for that small rock together. Command G. Call this, I don't know, baby rock. Now we're ready to add a cactus in. So I'll go back in again with the lasso tool. And I'm going to pick a greenish value for our cactus. And this cactus will be to the right of our cliff. And if we look at that value of green, you can see that the cactus is almost invisible, right? When I do a grayscale test, you can barely see it. So that tells me that I need to make this cactus a little bit lighter to give it more contrast. Now I can see the cactus a little bit better than I could before. So that's something that's important. And now I'll establish where the shadows are going to be. The shadows are going to be on the left side of the cactus. So I'm going to make a selection that goes around all the left sides of the cactus. I'll duplicate that selection and I'll pick kind of, uh, kind of a dark, not a dark blue, but kind of a, um, yeah, it's kind of a desaturated dark blue, but it's not totally dark blue. All right, so maybe more like an indigo type color. So uh, let's add some textures now to give the cactus a little bit of form. Making very thin lines on that blue layer just to give the cactus some definition. And I'll do the same thing over here. Command J, Command U. And that just gives our cactus cactusy type qualities. Right? So let's take that cactus and let's go ahead and group it. We'll call this cactus. Now you don't have to group layers in and sometimes when I'm working for myself I tend to get a little bit more sloppy with that but um, you know having some good habits I think will preserve your sanity. So all of the stuff so far we've got our mid-ground and background elements. Let's put some cactuses that are going to be against the cliff and let's make them a little bit darker. So I will, these cactuses will be closer to the viewer, but they're still going to be in the mid-ground area. You know, I might just vary them up a little bit, give them a little bit of tilt. We'll go in with black. So we have a few cactuses that are here. We might even throw in a prickly pear. Prickly pear is a cactus that has these little, almost, um, they're roundish in shape, not the saguaro cactuses. So I've got those cactuses that are serving as more mid-ground elements. Um, I will just label this as uh, dark cacti. Forgot there needs to be a rock on top of that cliff. So what I'll do is in a layer that's directly underneath the cliff layer, let's go ahead and draw that rock. 
again, freeform lasso tool. I'm drawing underneath the cliff layer because there are going to be certain parts of the rock that are going to be hidden. Let's dial in the contrast. And let's bring in some light values. J, U. Let's add some ridges and dots. J can view. We'll do the same thing on the side that has shadows. J can view. And at the very bottom of the rock, we'll maybe make it look darker. This side's not going to get any light. Command J, Command U. Contrast test. Okay, so that seems to pass the contrast test. Now let's take that rock and let's group the rock together. We'll call this rock on cliff. Okay, and now we're going to create a yellowish background. For that, I'm going to use the gradient tool. If I hit if I hit G, I get the gradient tool. And the gradient tool is pretty cool. Uh, when you open it up, I'll just pick another default value here. You will see a bunch of presets here. And if you want to customize a preset, you just simply select it. Uh, I'll just pick a black to white gradient because it's the simplest thing. And then if you hover your mouse or your stylus over this small black square, you will have the ability to edit that value. And I'll pick kind of uh, yellow medium to light yellow, and I'll go ahead and save it by clicking new. So it puts that gradient in the presets section. I'll click OK. There are different types of gradients. There's a radial gradient. If you look up at the top here, there's a linear gradient. We want the linear gradient. That's the uh, selection that appears to the right of the gradient preview. And if I were to take this gradient and drag down, you will see that uh, the light value starts on the top and the yellowish value starts at the bottom. I don't want that, I want to flip that over. So I'll actually drag from the bottom and move it back up to the top. And the reason for that is, well, first of all, it's like that kind of implies light, um, you know, rising, right? So it's gonna be a little bit more natural. Plus I have better contrast between some of my light gray values or my light blue values with the yellow. In fact, if I do a grayscale test on that, you can see that the contrast is still preserved. All right, cool. So we've got those elements in place. Let's now go ahead and put the sign. So the rock here is gonna be, the rock on the top of the cliff is gonna be where I want the viewer to look. I'm going to make a street sign, kind of in a dull yellowish color, using the rounded rectangle tool. So there's a rounded rectangle tool keyboard shortcut U, and I'm going to change the radius to about 60. So if you type in 60, I'm gonna make sure that fill is set to that yellow and stroke is set to nothing. And so like if I just drag this out and hold down the shift key, it constrains that. And I can hit Command T and I can rotate it to move in the direction that I want. And if I hit uh, enter, it'll say this operation will turn on the live shape to a regular path continue. I'm going to just hit don't show again. I'm going to click yes. And I'll just move this into position like so. So this is going to be my foreground element. This is going to, you know, hopefully give this scene some depth. So I've got that sign in place. Let's, while we're at it, let's go ahead and use the polygon lasso tool. If you hold down the shift key, coupled with the L, you can switch between the regular lasso tool to the poly lasso tool. And I'll pick kind of a brown value here. And, um, I wanna make sure that it's not gonna blend in with anything else. You can see how the yellow and the brown are starting to blend a little bit. So I'm gonna push that, so I'll desat it. And do a grayscale test, okay, that looks good. Now I'll switch to my reg regular lasso tool by holding down Shift and L. And just like we've done in previous videos, make a quick selection. I've got the, 
the wooden part right here. All right, so we've got that. Now let's go ahead and put the border that you would normally see inside those signs. So if I hold down the command or the control key, and if I click on the thumbnail preview for that layer, it automatically makes a selection. And I want to pick a medium, you know, a dark-ish value that's not quite black. Maybe let's just call it off black. And we want to go to Select, Modify, Contract, and I'll choose, say, 30. And what it'll do is it brings that selection in. And I need to make a new layer to where I can then apply a stroke. So I'll go into Stroke, I'll pick a 20 pixel stroke, and I'll click OK. I'll make sure that it's on the inside, click OK. And now I've got that sign. And that black is a little bit too dark, so I can actually go in for something lighter by dropping the opacity. So you see how that works. So I've got this stroke around the box, and let's add an arrow. And this arrow will be on its own layer. And I'll put a little bolt so that the sign feels like it has something that's holding it to the wooden stake. All right, so we've got the sign. I can group the sign together. Command G, call it sign. And doing this allows me to, once I've got all the layers associated with the sign group, I can reposition this. And I want to position in such a way that I'm not creating a weird parallel tangent. I can maybe transform the whole thing by rotating it. So I've got the sign here. Let's look at the grayscale value here. So the sign stands out from the cliff behind it. So everything looks pretty good. Now I want to add some atmosphere to my scene. So I'll make a new layer that's above the cliff layer that I created way back when. I'll call this layer screen. And I'm going to just add some atmospheric reds so that we get the sense of reflected light. And with that, I'm going to make sure that I'm using my soft round pressure opacity brush within Photoshop. I've already got that selected, but you will find it. It's part of Photoshop's general menus, general brushes. You'll see that it says soft round pressure opacity. That's the one that I'm going to be using here. And I will pick a bright red value, make the brush a little bit smaller. And I'll just come back in and uh, paint. Oh, I've got to set that to screen. If I set that to screen, you can see that that kind of gives a little bit of a reddish hint. Um, and I'll show you kind of like a here's a before, here's an after. So we get that sense of light intensity. And I'll even add that up here so you can kind of see. It gives us a little bit of a subtle gradient around the rock. And I think it looks kind of cool. And uh, a good vibrant red color works because I've got a lot of red within my scene here. Um, you know, if you wanted to, you could go back in and you could add some dark values to balance it. But this is where I'm going to leave it. This is uh, this is where I'm going to kind of stick with what I've got. So, you know, this is again utilizing several of the techniques that we've already talked about in previous videos. Now I'm just applying that. And with this video, we've also learned about the custom shape tool that Photoshop has so that you can add that to your repertoire as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it to be useful. Please feel free to share this video with your friends and enemies and so forth. Um, you know, I'm just really trying to grow the channel here. So uh, any help and any feedback that you can give me to make this channel even better, I'm all ears. Just write the comments below and uh, I will see you in the next video. As always, thanks for watching.